Hello, I have some comments for you about the story A Blizzard Under Blue Sky by Pam Houston. This is a story about a woman who is unhappy. She goes camping overnight in the mountains in the winter time with her two dogs, and the next morning she feels better. There are many American cultural references in this story, and I will explain some of them to you. The story takes place in the state of Utah. This region has beautiful mountains. A blizzard is a snowstorm with heavy wind. I took this film a couple of years ago when it was snowy and windy. I was following a government truck that was helping keep the road from being blocked by snow. In this story, however, it isn't really snowing. In a real blizzard, you probably could not see blue sky above. In this story, the weather is very cold, 32 degrees below zero on the Fahrenheit scale we use in the United States, or 35 degrees below zero Celsius. That is dangerously cold, and you must dress very, very warmly. The author skis out into the mountains with her two dogs, following trails in the snow. Eventually, she digs down into the snow and makes a shelter that is called a snow cave. Here's what a snow cave looks like. An Alaska clipper refers to a cold weather system that comes south into the main part of the United States from Alaska to the north. A clipper is what we call a fast sh sailing ship, but when we talk about weather, an Alaska clipper is a fast moving weather system with very cold air. Thermarest is a kind of pad that campers sleep on. When you sleep in the snow, your sleeping bag helps keep you warm, but the thermarest helps even more to keep you away from the cold and wet snow. Another reference in the story is to Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman is a well-known comic book character in the United States, a comic that has been published for over 60 years. She is princess of a tribe of female warriors. In the comics, she pretends to be an ordinary woman, but she has superpowers, including super strength, and she can fly. Of course, her costume also uses the red, white, and blue American colors and stars. I think that your book contains a small error. I have never heard of a dance called the two-stop, but the two-step is a well-known folk or social dance. Here you see some people dancing the two-step. It's often danced to a kind of music that we call country music. Yodeling, that the author talks about, supposedly originated in the mountains of Europe and was a way that people could communicate with each other from one mountain canyon to another. But in the United States, it's also a kind of folk music. Here is an example. That's a fun song featuring yodeling. Carnation is the name of a company in the United States that often deals in milk products. The Carnation Instant Breakfast is a powder that you mix in milk or water, and it gives you an easy, complete breakfast. Here's a TV commercial for Carnation Instant Breakfast. While you watch, I'm going to go down to my kitchen for the next thing I'm going to tell you about. Carnation Instant Breakfast. You're going to love it in an instant. You're going to love it in an instant. So good and frosty, rich and tasty. Carnation Instant Breakfast. You're going to love it in an instant. Carnation Instant Breakfast comes in four delicious flavors. Chocolate, strawberry, vanilla, chocolate malt. It's one nutritious breakfast you're going to love. Carnation Instant Breakfast. In regular and no sugar added. You're going to love it in an instant. Welcome to my kitchen. The last American brand name that I want to tell you about is Kool-Aid. 
This is a fruit flavored drink that's usually for children. You buy it in powder form in a packet like this. This packet has to be mixed with both sugar and water. But when I drink Kool-Aid now and then, I use this kind. This kind of Kool-Aid has artificial sweetener in it. So what you do is you tear the top off and you pour it in. And you stir it up. And you have a cherry flavored beverage that children enjoy because it tastes like fruit and it tastes sweet. Mm. Children really like Kool-Aid. I'd never heard that Kool-Aid can keep water from freezing. I'm not sure if that's really true, but maybe it is. I'm going to go back down the hall to my office now. Americans love their pets. This is my pet cat. Her name is Trixie. In America, our cats and dogs are like members of the family. They each have personalities. It's not that hard to figure out what your pet is telling you. When Trixie is hungry, she just comes and looks at me in a certain way. And it's as if she said out loud that she was hungry. I think this is what Pam Houston means when she has the dogs in her story talking. She doesn't mean they're really saying the words but they're delivering the messages as clearly as if they really were talking. Finally, I want to tell you about two literary references in A Blizzard Under Blue Sky. The first is Moby Dick. This is a reference to a famous 19th century novel by a man named Herman Melville. It is about the captain of a sailing ship that hunted whales in the 19th century. Years earlier, Captain Ahab had lost his leg while trying to capture the white whale, Moby Dick. Seeking revenge, Ahab hunts for the white whale all over the world. When he finally finds Moby Dick, the whale dies, the captain dies, his ship is sunk, and only a few crew members survive. So the story tells us that revenge is destructive. The second literary reference is when the dog Jackson says, Miles to go, Mom. This makes us remember a poem by Robert Frost. The poem tells of a man who is traveling by horse-drawn wagon at night in the snow many years ago. He enjoys the beauty of the falling snow and stops to watch it for a little while. Here is the end of the poem. The woods are lovely, dark, and deep, but I have promises to keep, and miles to go before I sleep, and miles to go before I sleep. I hope my comments have helped you understand some of the cultural references in this story.